Hello and welcome to the moment you've all been waiting for. This is my review of the Necron's Zarek the Silent King model. This model will set you back a whopping £95. It is the joint second most expensive Necron model after the Monolith which is £105, and the Tesseract Vault, which is the same price as Zarek, £95. But what an impressive model it is, both from a design standpoint and, yeah, its appearance. It's everything that uh, you could hope it would be. It is a difficult model uh, to put together. I tried building it in the three-hour live stream, or, and although I was replying to comments and taking my time with it, I wasn't able to finish it. So, although it's expensive, it's still cheaper than the recent uh, Age of Sigma um, giant, and it will take you longer to put together. The parts are in a very strange configuration where you have to go back to the, the twin sprues. The menhirs, which are these uh, floaty cannons, these are actually weapons, they're not sort of scenery pieces. They're, I mean, they could be scenery pieces, but, but they do have rules for themselves, uh, which we'll talk about later on, and um, they do fire. Uh, beams of energy at, uh, at your enemies um, but they were relatively straightforward to put together uh, but um, the Sonic King himself was tricky. Now I haven't glued some of the parts uh, I've kept it um, sub-assembly you guys are always telling me to build my models to sub-assembly yes some I do some I don't I know how to do it I've done a, a wall or titan where I took sub-assembly to the next level and painted every single individual part before I put it together so I'm well accustomed to that that form of model making but this channel and the way I do the reviews pushes me into a position of building the majority or, or what I can get away with in terms of building the model almost to it to full hundred percent of its uh recommended outcome and um, by that I, I mean um, I built the menus I built the whole of the, the throne area I haven't glued uh, Zarek himself he's uh, separate you could put him on a base he'd be fine I haven't glued the cloak because the cloak kind of glues onto the throne itself rather than on him um, I haven't glued these two triarchs holding his other uh, magical weapons <laughs> Um, they are an absolute pain to put together, I have to tell you right now. Um, the throne is, is all right to put together. The, these pieces are quite difficult and they're difficult to get, um, you know, uh, level as well. But there we go, it is what it is. The Shard of the Catan here would be a, quite difficult to paint once it's glued on, so you might want to um, keep that detached for now. Um, but I've every faith uh, that I'm going to spray this very, very soon and um, paint it in Warhammer Wednesday's uh, live stream as much as I can. I don't know how I'm going to paint these uh, men here, but we'll, we'll have a go. The first thing we'll do is we'll look at the detail. Um, both the men here are exactly the same models, so we only need to look at uh, one of these. Um, but as you can see, I'm very happy with the, the detail that's uh, on offer. You've got some uh, Necron glyphs here. Uh, you've got them um, mirrored on the other side. You've got the uh, glowy balls of energy. You've got Zarak himself. We'll do some size comparisons in a, in a moment. Um, but yeah, there's a fair amount of detail on him. He's got this amazing staff, uh, which looks like it contains some kind of stonework from uh, Zeras's um, carapace mounted uh, tool. Uh, there's loads of uh, glyphs and icons on him uh, and on his legs, which we don't usually see. He's got a spiky spine. Uh, one of the members in the Discord, if you wanted to hop on over there, uh, has actually glued the two tiny little scarabs uh, that you get um, onto his hand. But uh, there's options for you putting them on, on any part of this model, really. Uh, so, yeah, Zarek looks quite cool. It's a tall, tall uh, Necron King. And then uh, you've got the Triax themselves. They are a little bit different. They've got different uh, heads, um, different staffs, uh, different... Um, loin cloths I want to call them. Uh, their spines are the same but yeah they're unique enough to be two separate uh, and then you've got the throne itself uh, absolutely crazy looking uh, piece. I was very uh, apprehensive about how it attached to this uh, base um, I wasn't sure how because they they do a very good job at hiding this um, plastic uh, disc 
uh, which comes attached to the uh, lightning or uh, energy, whatever you want to call it. You've got these things here, which I think are, are weaponry. You've got the steps themselves, which uh, are, are a bit wobbly. That's just the way they, they work and they, and they glue. They only glue on uh, one small sort of piece there. So that's a bit uh, delicate. Uh, you've got the, uh, the rails, the handrails around this uh, throne thing. You've got these energy converter things. You've got these high energy cabling. Uh, you've got lots of glyphs on these pylons. You've got the Catan itself, um, you know, being, uh, being ripped of all of its energy uh, in this uh, awesome looking pose. Uh, as I say, probably best to leave that off. You've got the, uh, the big pylons themselves. You've got the uh, thrusters. Um, unfortunately, you can't move this little tail thruster like that I thought you could in the uh, live stream. Um, but yeah, there's a fair amount of detail all around here. It's gonna be a bit of pain to paint all in there, but uh, I should be able to, to manage it. So yeah, Throne is quite big, loads of uh, detail. It was a tough build. I thought it was uh, tougher to build than uh, Techless. Um, which is a little bit more expensive um, but the main difficulty I had was just with these uh, was just with these two um, really um, and getting things level and straight uh, but the many is as I say very easy to put together will you get your money's worth in terms of building it yeah definitely and even more so with the painting more than many models but we're yet to see the uh, Necron uh, monolith um, and how uh, how much of a decent build that will be so let's go on to the spare parts of which there are none. What you see is what you get. You're gonna use all of them unless you uh, use the, the two little scarabs um, somewhere. So size wise, uh, let's kick it off with just normal Necron Warrior. We might as well. There's a Necron Warrior, of course. It's gonna you know, tower above many units. Um, we've got a, a Scorpec Destroyer, again, much taller than one of those. A Reanimator, starting to, to get a bit taller now. A, uh, a Doom Stalker, yeah, we're, we're almost there. Um, and that's about it. It's gonna be interesting to see how tall of a model the Void Dragon is, probably about there. I still don't think that the Void Dragon is gonna be taller than uh, the Silent King model. I don't think the Monolith will even reach the same height. Um, so that leads us to uh, the Seraptek, which is taller. Here it is, Silent King. So the Silent King is officially bigger than uh, the Necron uh, Seraptek Heavy Constructs. Unless he falls off his throne. That was good for a uh, slow-mo, I guess. I've modeled the Seraptek with the blades in a way that you shouldn't really. They don't really suggest you do that. They suggest it put it down. So that would have made the Seraptek look even smaller. But yeah, so far um, we, we've yet to see the Void Dragon and the Monolith, but I'm quite confident that both of those models will also be smaller than the Silent King. So they should. He is the king of the Necrons. So that's as far as the uh, Necron uh, size comparisons go. If you would like to see uh, other size comparisons, um, he's obviously shorter than a, a Warhound Titan, probably taller than a Imperial Knight. But if you would like to see others uh, as I paint him in Wednesday's uh, live stream, please do just put it in the comments today. Moving on to Imperial models, uh, we've got uh, Space Marine, Slime Marbo, and um, Primaris. It's gonna dwarf most of the Space Marine uh, units. It's gonna be one of the biggest uh, units on, on your gaming board when if you do go up against the Space Marines, um, just because again of that vertical presence uh, that the Necron models uh, provide. I wanna just do a quick comparison with Zarek himself, uh, just to show you how much of a, a tall um, Necron he is. He's way taller than a, uh, a Primaris. And, um, you know, quite possibly almost as tall as a Scorpec Lord. Um, I mean, compared to a normal Necron Warrior, he's uh, very, very tall. Um, and then even a Scorpec Lord, like if he was on a base, he would be kind of head height, which is remarkable when you think about it. Um, but yeah, the staff itself is <laughs> taller than the Scorpec Lord. I mean, that's just incredible. Um, how tall that, that staff is, how big his uh, weapons are. So what we'll do now is we'll just go through all of his rules. I mean, the rules uh, section of this review could well be a video by its own. Let's kick off of where you'll find the Silent King. Um, he's uh, lurking hardly or hardly lurking over in the um, massive, massive Lord of War 
section of uh, the Necron Codex, of which there are no less than four Lords of Wars. So that means you've got a choice between the Silent King, a Monolith, which I think should be in the Heavy Support choice, an Obelisk, or a Tesseract Vault. He will set you back 23 power points. It's the second most expensive unit in the army after the Tesseract Vault, which is 25 power points. His points cost, he will set you back 450 points, yes. So he's almost a 500 point model. In comparison, the Tesseract Vault is 500 points and a monolith is 360. So he's high up there at almost a quarter of the points cost of a 2000 point uh, army. So he's one of these uh, units, of course, whereby uh, the number of wounds remaining uh, affects his stat line. He starts off with 16 wounds, but if he's got more than nine wounds remaining, his movement speed is eight inches, his weapon skill and ballistic skill are both two plus, his strength is five, toughness seven, 16 wounds, six attacks, leadership 10, and a save of three plus. If he's got between five and eight wounds, his movement speed is six inches, weapon skill two plus, ballistic skill two plus, strength five, toughness seven, and he's got four attacks, leadership 10 and a save of three plus. And then when he's only got between one and four wounds, his movement speed drops all the way down to four inches. Weapon skill and ballistic skills remain at two plus. Strength, and, strength is five, toughness is seven. His attacks drop down to two, his leadership 10 and a save of three plus. So therefore, the number of wounds remaining only really affects his movement speed and his, and his number of attacks. So if you're wearing him down, He's going to be getting he's going to be moving slower towards you and getting less attacks in combat when he does reach you zarek is equipped with scepter of eternal glory staff of stars scythe of dust every triarch or menir is equipped with annihilator beam your army can only include one the silent king unit there you go so one lord of war so you can only have him uh in your army once now what do these uh triarch or menirs um well, the Triarch or Menir have their own profile. They're a movement of eight inches, weapon skill six plus, ballistic skill two plus, strength five, toughness seven, five wounds, one attack, leadership 10, and a save of three plus. They've only got five wounds each, so in total you're looking at, what, 26 wounds for this whole uh, unit, I guess. It's great that they're a movement of eight inches because they have, because they're equipped with the Annihilator Beam, which is a range 36 inch, heavy one, strength 12, AP minus four, and damage six. In some aspects, that's better than the Doomsday Blaster, which is a strength 10, but it is AP minus four. Um, they're just a slight less range, but a solid damage D6, and you get two of them, so you're getting two strength 12 shots there. Incredible. Now, all of his weaponry. Pretty much, you've got the Scepter of Eternal Glory. Now, that's got a, a shooting attack and a melee attack. The Scythe of Dust has just got melee, but the Staff of Stars has also got shooting and melee. Gets quite complicated when uh, your main guy has got three different weapons. <laughs> but the Scepter of Eternal Glory for the shooting attack, it's a range 24 inch, assault three, strength eight, AP minus three, and a damage two. When it's in melee, it's a strength plus four, which means it's strength nine, AP minus three, and a damage of two. The Staff of Stars shooting attack is a range 24 inch, assault nine, strength six, AP minus two, and a damage of one. And in melee, it's a strength of the user, which is only five, but it is AP minus two, and a damage of one. But each time the bearer fights, it makes three additional attacks with this weapon, and no more than three attacks can be made with this weapon. That's nice that you get an extra three attacks. So you're getting nine attacks there. So the Scepter of Eternal Glory is good against high toughness units. The Staff of Stars is good against um, hordes. And then you've got the Scythe of Dust, which is a strength plus three, so that's strength eight, AP minus four, and damage of three. Each time the bearer fights, it makes four additional attacks with this weapon, and no more than four attacks can be made with this weapon. So that is the best weapon to go for in close combat against the high toughness uh, unit. You're getting the strength eight, you're getting the AP minus four, you're getting three damage, and you're getting 10 attacks if he's still got all of his wounds remaining. So very, very solid choice of both uh, range weaponry and melee. Although he is short range uh, for his uh, shooting at attacks, at least uh, he's covered by the two flanking menirs that can pump out strength 12 shots. Abilities then. Wow, this is a separate video on its own as well. Living Metal, Command Protocols, Noctilith Beacons. In your opponent's psychic phase, Sarek can attempt to deny one psychic power as if he were a psyker. 
that's pretty cool. Obey Sans generators. At the start of the fight phase, if there are any Oh dear, that's not very good. If there any if there are any enemy units within engagement range of Zarek, then until the end of the phase, those units cannot fight until after all other eligible units from your army have done so. Interesting. Phaeron of the Stars. Aura. While a friendly Necron's core unit or Treyarch Praetorian's unit is within six inches of Zarek, each time a ranged attack is made by a model in that unit, you can re-roll the hit roll. Phaeron of Blades Aura. While a friendly Necron's core or unit or Triarch Praetorian's unit is within six inches of Zerak, each time a melee attack is made by a model in that unit, you can reroll the wound roll. Excellent. Relentless March Aura. While a friendly Necron's core or Triarch Praetorian's unit is within six inches of Zerak, each time that unit is selected to make a normal move or advance until the end of that phase, add one inch to the move characteristic of models in that unit. My will be done. In your command phase, you can select one friendly Necron's core or Triarch Praetorian's unit within 9 inches of Zerak. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to that attack's hit roll. Each unit can only be selected for this ability once per phase. Phaeron. This model can this model can use its My Will Be Done once additional one additional time per turn. That's nice, so you can use it twice. Voice of the Triarch. Once per battle, at the start of any battle round, if Zarek is on the battlefield, he can alter your command protocols. If he does, the command protocol that you did not assign to any battle rounds before the battle becomes active for your army for that battle round, instead of the one that you assigned it to. Assigned to it. Triarchal Manir. While this unit contain, contains any Triarchal Manir models, it does not count as a character for the purposes of the Lookout Sir, and each time an attack successfully wounds this unit, that attack must be allocated to one of those models. The destruction of the Triarchal Manirs is ignored for the purposes of morale tests. If Zarek is ever destroyed, any remaining Triarchal Manirs in this unit are also destroyed. The Silent King. If your army is battleforged, Zarek must be your army's warlord. If you receive, you receive three additional command points if Zarek is your warlord, Transtemporal Force Field. Models in this unit have a 4 plus invulnerable save. Preservative Auto Torpor. If Zarek has 8 or fewer wounds remaining, it cannot make attacks with its Staff of Stars and loses the Phaeron of the Stars ability. If Zarek has 4 or fewer wounds remaining, it cannot make attacks with the Scythe of Dust and loses the Phaeron of the Blades ability. Ooh, that's a bit of a handicap. Vengeance of the Enchained. When Zarek is destroyed, roll 1d6 before removing it from play. On a 4+, plus, it explodes, and each unit within 2d6 suffers d6 mortal wounds. Wow, 2d6, and then you get d6 mortal wounds. Keywords, Necrons, Zarek, Vehicle, Character, Fly, Supreme Commander, Phaeron, Noble, Dynastic Agent, The Silent King, Zarek, Vehicle, Fly, Dynastic Agent, Silent King, Triarchal, Menes. So there you go, quite an exhaustive rules section for um, the Silent King. Uh, this model, this unit is not for the faint-hearted. Uh, if you're just going for an Overlord and some Necron Warriors, um, this is a lot to take in uh, for the Silent King. Um, it's got more it's got more rules and abilities than any other unit in the entire uh, Codex. I guess he's a fun unit to, to play with and um, extremely powerful. Of course, uh, either with, of course, you don't get him just for the uh, 36 inch range uh, menus. You get him so that he's an absolute beast in close combat and his aura abilities. Absolutely stunning model, fantastic rules, although there's a lot to take in. What do you guys think of uh, the Silent King? Is he everything that you hoped and dreamed for? Please do put your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below today. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Flesh is Weak.